So far, we have seen the examples of two variable maps, three variable maps, K map. How we can construct the four variable K maps if we have a Boolean function of four variables? Let's take a look at the following example. First, uh, the four variable K map will have 16 cells, 16 squares, right? Two to the power of four. And the order of variable will have the following pattern. It's very easy, convenient, if you remember this following pattern. So W, X, and Y, and Z, right? W, X, and then Y, and Z. So it will be easier for us to, to label these four variable K map. W, X, Y, and Z, right? And the location of the mean terms will be as follows. Three, I mean, zero, one, three, two, four, five, six, seven, and then eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. The placements of these uh, mean terms in this following order, again, allows us to keep the one bit change between adjacent cells, right? So another thing that you need to memorize is the following order, right? The location of the mean terms. So W, X, Y, and then Z. There is another way uh, to write these downs. Okay, let me just do it for convenience. So here, uh, I'm, I'm going to write it down like this. For example, we can write here W, X, and then Y, Z, right? Then we can write down those 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and then we have 1, 1, then 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Right? So these are all possible combinational values. For instance, the mean term 0 represents W, X, Y, Z. 0, 0, 0, 0. Right? And then this 4, W, X, Y, Z, 0, 1, Y, Z. Again, in this mapping, we have Z in these all four cells, eight cells, right? doesn't change. So it remains 1, 1. 1, 1. Well, W here in all these eight cells remains 1, 1. Right? And then X. Here, X. 1, 1. Right? On all these eight cells, eight squares. Y, Y. Right? And then these uh, eight cells will correspond to Y complement, W complement. Again, uh, it's it will. Uh, you may need some time to get used until you remember this alternative labeling. So whenever you want to construct a K map for four variables, remember the following: okay, variable order, this pattern. In the in the case of four variable K maps, we can have the following rectangulars, which will correspond to, for instance, here a single rectangular, uh, which consist of just single one will give us four variable term. This is another term, it's a mean term, right? And if you group two ones, two ones, then we'll have three variables. One of the variable will get eliminated. And if you group four ones and two variables, eight ones, one variable. And if you have all the cells, such as 16 cells to be one, and if you group all of them, then we'll have zero variable or the constant, right? In KMAP, we want to group as more ones as possible, okay, in the order of two to the n, from one, two, four, eight, sixteen. Here we have the example shape of rectangles. Here we are grouping four, let's say cells, another four, and look, we will have these cells adjacent, so we can group this way, mean term zero, two, eight, ten. So they are actually a group of four. And we also have the, the following cells adjacent, okay? We can group this way as well, or this way as well. So all four are rectangular to this, and all four cells are rectangular, uh, adjacent to this rectangular form. For example, we see here, right? These are adjacent to these four. Yeah, we can have all possible kind of grouping. These four, for example, can be grouped as one. Let's take a look at the following example. 
we have a function of four variables represented as a sum of mean terms, sum of product terms, right? SOP form, identified by the mean term locations. And we want to use kmap to simplify this function, this Boolean function. So first, let me start uh, drawing the map, the kmap, for four variables, so that you know how we can okay, start. All right, so this is going to be a map consisting 16 cells. Okay, something like that. So let me write down as follows W, X, Y, and then Z. And I want to write the values of all possible input combinations. Okay, and also let me write down the location of the mean terms. M zero M one M three M two four five M six Okay, let me write it in order M eight M nine M 10, M11, and then we have M12, M13, M14, right, and then finally M15. So here we have uh, 16 uh, mean terms for a okay, function of four variables. Now I need to identify these, the location of these mean terms, and then place ones there. So first one, and then second. Uh, second uh, mean term identified by 2, 4 is here, and then 5, 6, 7, we have 8, 10, 13, and then 15. Okay, we have the following ones. Now, next uh, step would be to apply grouping. We want to group these right, using uh, the technique we have introduced. So first we need to try to find the maximum possible grouping of all ones. So look, these okay, ones are one group because they are adjacent to each other. Uh, one uh, group of ones, right? four ones. Now let's try to find the uh, the value for this term, for this group, for this group of ones. F, okay, of, okay, W, X, Y, Z is equal to, in this case, we see that, um, look, here, okay, if you look at this and this pattern, then we see that um, X doesn't change, it remains 0, 0, right? But W changed 0 and then 1 for this group of 2. And also, y changes here from 0 to 1 when we group these four ones. So that is a visual pattern identification to eliminate those variables. However, z doesn't change. z remains 0 here, also 0 here, right? So uh, what we are left with x complement and then z complement. x complement and then z complement. This is the term for this grouping for these four. Now, next, we need to group other possible ones. How about these four ones, right? Four ones. In this case also, if you take a look at these changing patterns, then X doesn't change, one, one. And then also Z doesn't change, right? But W changes, Y changes. So what we get is X and Y, right? Or and we have this, okay, another group. There are different possibilities to perform grouping here. We can group like this by two, or we can group all the four, I mean, four ones here. So in this case, we see that 
w doesn't change will be complemented and then x doesn't change All right so this is the term we obtained using the k-map simplification All right so first second and third okay first second and then third grouping so this is first okay the following four second and then the following four is a uh, third term for convenience let me rewrite the final obtained expression f of w x y and then z after applying Carnot map we have the following three terms x y and then x right this is the optimized or function simplified function which is represented by sum of products term well note that in forming this k map okay um, i uh, literally provided like w x y z but i also mentioned about the alternate uh, alternate map labeling right so let me just quickly draw how we can avoid writing type writing the zero 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 one 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 zero and then also this one more time how you can okay get the alternate labeling so uh, let me just quickly draw this okay okay one two three two four so 16 right now in alternate labeling is it we will have um, this line coming out and then this line coming out and two lines coming out from here and then two lines coming out from here so i said uh, to remember the this this pattern like w x and then this one right this pattern so okay you can simply memorize the location so w x y and then z this is how you can define alternate uh, labeling for four variable k-map so based on these uh, complemented or uncomplemented uh, variables we see that w in this region is 1 1 as you can see 1 1 while uh, z is also 1 1 right y here is okay 1 and then 1 right 1 and 1 in this region x here is 1 1 here in this region anywhere else they change so uh, this alternate labeling allows you to uh, draw uh, k maps quickly and then find the patterns also quickly here we have another function that is defined as follows and then let's go through the same simplification now i'll draw the k map so let me write down this using alternative label here we have one line Okay, here and this one and okay and then y well we said that alternative labeling could be easier to identify okay, as follows this will be our w x y and then z right and we start placing in those values okay three is here one and then four mean term for location is here another one five is here and seven is here nine is here 13 14 and then 15 okay so we have the following set of uh, ones okay for each of these indexes now let's try to group them we can group the following two these two neighbors the adjacent cells these two and these two right we'll have four terms okay in addition yeah we could have also grouped these four but they are already covered so we don't have to so now let's try to write down the expressions for all of these uh, four groups let me call it a b c and then d right so our function will be uh, having those terms a or b or 
C or D, right? And then if we find the simplification uh, for the A term, we need to find the, the pattern. We need to look at the pattern, how it changed. Okay, so first we identify this one, how it changed. So we see X doesn't change in this group, and then Y doesn't change, right? Z changes. Uh, also, we see that W doesn't change. So we will have for A term three variable W, X, and then Y. Z changed from 1 to 0, so it gets eliminated. So now let's take a look at the second term B. B. Right. Try to find the pattern of change in, in this grouping. The only pattern that changes is X. X gets eliminated. C, uh, W remains, okay? Y remains, Z remains. So W will be complemented. W complement, Y, and then Z. Or, and then what about the, the third one? Okay, Z changes. W will be complemented. And then Y will be complemented. X not. It not complement X not. It's X will not be complemented. So we'll have W, Y, and then X. Or Finally, for the following, for group of four, what do we have here? Z doesn't change, W doesn't change, Y doesn't change, only X, right? So W, Y complemented, and then Z, okay? So our function will contain four terms as defined follows, okay? So we can see that initially the function has eight, eight terms, right? Eight terms in canonical sum of products. Using KMAP, we reduce those eight terms into four terms, the more optimized function. 